you've got Edson Barbosa against Bryce Mitchell. Now, Bryce Mitchell is undefeated, 14-0. He has lost, right, but that was on turf, and it counts as like an exhibition belt. So it doesn't actually count. They On the UFC website, they bill him as 14-1, and but he's not actually. Officially, he's 14-0 and because that was an exhibition. So I'll give him that. Bryce Mitchell is an absolute stud man. Like, the level of his submissions are ridiculous because the, to be able to get the, the twister, it's not like, you know, a striker can, like, grab, like, a, a submission here and there because they stun, the like, a fighter and, like, like, get the back and they grab the choke. You know, you'll see, you'll see a lot of, you know, rear naked chokes. You'll see a lot of, you know, even a lot of arm bars, but twisters, you don't see many of those. I think it was Korean Zombie that did the first one, either in the WEC or it might have been in the UFC. But either way, Korean Zombie managed to get a twister, but you just don't see very many of them. And Bryce Mitchell got Charles Rosa in a twister position several times. He didn't actually get it, but he was going for it, like, all the time, and he nearly had it. And Charles Rosa is a very good grappler in his own right. So to get those positions on a grappler who is as good as Charles Rosa, that was very, very impressive. So we know that Bryce Mitchell, his grappling is it's on another planet it is really really great however i don't think he he's not exactly like a stud wrestler who's gonna be like he can get the fight to the ground though but i think that in order to do that unfortunately he's gonna have to step into edson barbosa's range now edson barbosa he's been around a long time he's fought people that have tried to take him down over and over again and and sometimes it work it works and sometimes it doesn't you have to be a pretty high res level offensive wrestler to be able to get edson barbosa to the ground and i think actually you need to be able to mix in the strikes to be able to to kind of distract barbosa to the point where you can take him down to the ground if this goes to the ground I think Bryce Mitchell's going to have a nice, easy route to a submission. But in order to do that, he has to step into Barbosa's range. I think that's a problem. Barbosa has a five-inch reach advantage here. And he has, a, he has a slight reach advantage with the legs as well. Bryce Mitchell is not exactly known for his kicks. So I don't think that the leg reach being basically even is in Bryce Mitchell's favour. Barbosa looks like a savage at featherweight honestly like he's two and two but that's deceptive the fight with dan ige was razor close and actually i kind of had barbosa winning that I, I wouldn't complain either way but let's not pretend that that was like that that was him getting dominated because it wasn't it was a very close fight and one that you could have arguably given him the judges didn't on that night and you have to take that but then you've got um you know he beat shane burgos and who else did he beat? He beat somebody else as well. I forget. But then he lost to uh, Giga Chikadze. But Giga Chikadze hit him with that Giga kick, man. And it was just like, Giga Chikadze just seemed like a quicker version of him who was, who was you know, who, like in the kickboxing range. And he just looked really, really great. So fair play to Giga Chikadze. But I think this is a much... I think... You know, Barbosa is coming in as an underdog here because Bryce Mitchell is undefeated and, and people are just assuming he's going to have an easy job taking uh, Barbosa down. But you've got to remember that Barbosa, he's a big lump for 145. He is just, he, he's, you know, he's, he's like, he's built like, you know, you see chimpanzees, like they're, like they're, it's like they're made out of steel, right? You look at him at featherweight, it's like he's made out of pure metal and he's, and he's big. He's about as big as a featherweight could possibly be. He's huge. And, He's so quick as well, and his striking is so good. You know, I mean, they say, you know, obviously, right, and Bryce Mitchell, when it comes to grappling, there are levels, and Bryce Mitchell's super high. But you've also got to remember, there are levels to striking. And Edson Barbosa is about as high as it gets when it comes to striking. And it's not like he's never faced, like, people that have tried to grapple him before. And I don't think Bryce Mitchell is exactly this power double kind of, like, wrestler who's going to like have an easy time getting him to the ground he may well get barbosa to the ground in which case you know it's going to be a, a tough night for barbosa but i don't think it's going to be easy to get barbosa to the ground and if you end up staying in kicking range and striking range for too long with barbosa whilst you're trying to figure out how to get in on those legs and how to get a takedown uh, especially if you if you're shooting those takedowns kind of naked if you're shooting those takedowns without setting up strikes if you're predictable with lowering that head get ready for a knee to the mush because barbosa's got those weapons he has those 
weapons. And that is why I'm taking Barboza the double chance here. Because the odds are quite short on the knockout for Barboza. For me, there's no real chance in limiting yourself to that just that one. Because it could go to a decision. It is only a three-rounder. So I'm taking the double chance on the knockout or decision for Edson Barboza. That is 2.38. That is going on to the bet slip. And then 